To solve this lab, you'll capture and leak the administrator user's request to reveal their session cookie using a CLTE request smuggling vulnerability. And you'll be able to use that session cookie to log in as the administrator, which will solve the lab. But you may find the lab to be a bit tricky because calculating the content length of our smuggled request isn't an exact science. And you may get errors like not found and invalid request as you go along. But I was able to find a way to solve the lab consistently without encountering these errors. And I'll share that method with you in this video. Let's get started. I'm on the homepage of the lab here and we're targeting the root endpoint of the application for request smuggling first. So this page right here. So I'm gonna to switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want the get slash request for the root endpoint and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. And first we have to determine whether the lab or the endpoint itself is vulnerable to a CLTE attack or a TECL attack. So I'm gonna do that through a timing technique and I'm gonna to go to request attributes here first on the right side. And I'm gonna downgrade the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1. Then I'm gonna switch the request method to post and I'm gonna delete any unnecessary headers. So anything up from the content type and underneath the host header. I'm also going to go to the request settings here and make sure that update content length automatically is turned off because we wanna be able to control that ourselves to perform the timing technique. And I'm also gonna show new lines or the non-printable characters. That's just handy when you're doing request smuggling in general. It's handy for counting the content length and also to see if you have an extra one or a missing one. I'm gonna add the transfer encoding chunk header. And then we're going to add a, or we're going to send a chunk of size three, ABC, followed by the letter X, which is an invalid chunk size. I'm gonna update the content length to six and send this. And you can already see that the response has taken a long time to get back. And when we eventually get a timeout, that's a very strong indication that this endpoint is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. Now you can see that here, the request is timed out. So that's a very strong indication for the CLTE vulnerability. Next thing we wanna do is confirm that CLTE vulnerability. So I'm going to send a copy of this request to repeater. I'm going to delete the um, body that we had here before for the timing technique. Also gonna delete the transfer encoding chunk header. And I'm just gonna add a body, a request body parameter foo for a value of bar. And I'm gonna send this request just to make sure that we get back a 200 okay. And this will become our normal request. So I'm gonna rename this tab to normal request. And I'm gonna go switch back to tab number three here. And this will be our attack request. And I'm going to delete the body that we had here before. And instead, I'm going to put down a terminating chunk because the backend is using transfer encoding chunk. We want the backend to think that the request has ended here. And we're gonna start our request smuggling here by sending a get request for something that doesn't exist. So some gibberish. We wanna use HTTP 1.1. And we also wanna add a content length and a content type. I'm gonna leave the content length as is now. Uh, for now, and I'm gonna add a request body parameter X for a value of none. And the content length we wanna set here instead of six, well, we can leave it at six, but the minimum we should set it to is the content length we have right here, which is two bytes plus one, because we want at least one byte of our normal request to be appended to our smuggled request. So I'm gonna set this to three, but you can leave it at six if you want. I'm also going to go to the request settings here and turn on update content length automatically again, because we're dealing with a CLTE vulnerability. Uh, we want the front end to forward the entire request to the backend server. And we, if we turn on uh, update content length automatically, this will be taken care of, uh, well, automatically, and we won't have to fiddle with this setting uh, as we work through the lab. So let me send this request and we get back at 200. Okay, I'm gonna go to the normal request and send it as well and we get back a 404 not found. So this confirms to us that the CLTE vulnerability exists and now we're ready to exploit it. So to capture the administrator user session cookie in the attack request, instead we wanna do a post request here that uh, posts the comments under one of the blog posts. So let's switch to the application. I'm just gonna to go to the first blog post right here and let's look what, the, what a comment looks like or a post request for that looks like. So I'm gonna add some fake data here, foobar, foo at bar.com, bar.com, and post a comment, and then switch to burp, and go to proxy, HTTP history, and we want to post comment here. I'm gonna send that to repeater, and switch to repeater. I'm going to copy the entire request here, and then go to our attack request. So instead of our get request here, and what we had before, I'm just gonna paste that. 
We want to downgrade the HTTP protocol for that post request to HTTP 1.1. We want to keep the host header, the cookie header, and the content length. And I'm going to delete some of the other headers here up to content type. We do want to keep the content type. I'm going to delete user agent. Yeah, everything after that can be deleted. Just make sure that you have a new line between the smuggled request headers here and the smuggled request body. It's also important that the CSRF token that you have here and the session cookie, that there are values that you found when you did your own post request to post a comment because these two are closely tied together. And if they're invalid values that don't belong together or aren't tied together, then when our smuggled request to post a comment here gets triggered, it will actually fail the CSRF check and a comment won't be posted. So, so make sure that you use uh, valid values for these two. Last thing you wanna do is cut the comment request body parameter here together with its value if you have one and make sure that you append it to the end instead because after we've sent our attack request and we follow it up with our normal request, we want our normal request to be appended as a comment to the request body parameter comment, or when the administrator browses the site and is doing get requests, we want that get request to be appended as a comment together with all the request headers. So we're able to see it in the comment section of blog post number three here. And now we've probably arrived at the most difficult part of the lab, which is setting the content length here for our smuggled request. And we have a value of 120 here. And if I select a text that we have in our request body and go to the right side under selection, you can see that we have 120 bytes selected. But we do want to increase that value because when the administrator is browsing the website using get requests, we want as much of that get request that the administrator user issued to be appended here in the comment section. So we want to increase that value. The question is by how much? And I think an initial way to gauge uh, that number is just by going to uh, the proxy tab again and going to HTTP history and the get slash request here and simply uh, selecting the text here and going to selection on the right side. And we have a value of 707 here. So 707 plus 120 is 827. So if we go back to repeater and go to the content length here, I'm just gonna modify that and put down 127. And that's a good starting value. And then if we don't see enough of the administrator's request headers and we don't get to see the session cookie, we can always keep increasing uh, this value right here. Now, it's also important to note that the administrator user isn't browsing the website constantly. So what we want to do is we want to send in a tech request and then we want to follow that up with our normal request here. And if we get, we send our normal request and we see a 302 here, then that means that um, our normal request was appended to our own attack request and we posted a comment. And then we'll send the attack request again. If we get a 302 again, when we send our normal request, it means the same thing. We posted uh, a comment ourselves. And we'll repeat that until we send an attack request, follow it up with a normal request. And when we see a 200 as a response to that normal request, instead of a 302, then we know that the administrator's user or someone else's uh, get request or post request was actually appended to our attack request that we uh, poisoned the backend with. And then we can check the blog post to see what was posted there. So that's the technique that we'll be using. Now, the last thing we wanna fix before we start our request smuggling is we wanna think about the content length of our normal request because content length 11 is actually not enough because our attack request is expecting a content length of 827. And if I uh, select everything here, you can see on the right side that what I have selected here is actually 162 bytes, because remember, it's not just the content length, everything here in the request gets appended to our uh, smuggled request. So 162 plus 120 is way less than the expected content length of 827. So the backend will actually keep waiting for those bytes to come in to reach 827. And eventually the request will time out because those bytes aren't coming in. So we wanna make sure that we pad this request so that we reach 827 bytes at least. Um, the safest way I found to do that is actually by adding, I'm gonna show non-printable characters, is by just adding padding through new lines. I tried adding padding in a new request header like X ignore followed by like bunch of letter A's or adding padding here to the request body parameter foo, but I got inconsistent results. The best results I got was simply using new lines to do the padding. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm just gonna add a bunch of new lines 
and we need a lot of them. So I think it's up to like 250, let's see. I'm gonna select everything now, Control A, and see we have a selection of 630 here on the right. So gotta keep going. We want at least 827. We got 848 here now. So that seems sufficient. I'm gonna maybe decrease that a bit. We can increase it later if we need to. 834, that's close enough. So we can start with that. So let's go to our attack request. And I'm gonna send it. We get back a 200 okay. And send our normal request. And we get a 302 foul, which means we posted a comment. So I'm gonna send another attack request and send our normal request. And we get another 302 found. So we posted another comment, send another attack request, followed by another post request here. And we get a 200 okay now. So that means that something else gobbled up our smuggled request. So let's go to the lab and I'm gonna go back to the blog and go to, yeah, we're on the blog post here. And we can see a get request here. And I found that you can see that it's uh, the admin user doing the get request by looking at the user agent and we can see victim here. But if we look at the request headers that we have available, the session cookie isn't visible anywhere. So we need to increase the content length in our smuggled request body. So back to burp, and I'm gonna to go to the attack request and modify the content length to let's say 900 now. I don't actually have to update the or add padding in the normal request because we had a um, total content length uh, request headers and body included of 834. 834 plus 120 uh, of the content length we have here is equal to 954. So that's still more than the content length we set here. So that should work. So let's send this attack request. We get back a 200 okay. Send the normal request, 200 okay. Let's see, rush the page. Oh, we got a get request immediately. That's the admin user. And we can see a secret, um, but we don't see a session cookie. So let's go back. And then I'm gonna go to the attack request and increase the content length to 950 and send it. We get back a 200 okay. And send the normal request, 302 found. Send the attack request again. Send another normal request, another attack request another normal request and a 200 okay. Let's go back to the blog and refresh. And we can see a session cookie here now. And we can see that's complete because it's there's a partial uh, print of the content link coming after. So let me copy this. And then I'm gonna go to the cookie editor session and I'm just gonna replace the value here and save. And I'm gonna refresh the page. And we've solved the lab because if I go to my account, you can see that our username is administrator. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.